maintain us in, in a way that you would like, that, like us to do that in a very respectful and, and communication way, of talking to people and listening with our ears and uh, just making everybody feel that they're, they're, they're heard and they're important. Uh, and, and help us make those, those tough decisions going forward uh, that, that the city needs to move on in, in a, a very competitive world. Thank you for all the help and wealth that you've given us and you guys saying you pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
The proclamation, whereas the North Canton Rotary Service Club of volunteers whose purpose is to serve the community, schools, nonprofits, and families of North Canton. Whereas the spirit of Rotary and the quality of its members are <coughs> exemplified by the Rotary motto, which is service above, service above self. The Rotary functions according to the four way test of the things we think, say, or do. Is it truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it benefit? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Whereas the North Canton Rotary is a global network of 1.2 million neighbors, friends, business leaders, and problem solvers who see the world where people can unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe in our communities and in ourselves. Rotary's people of action have used their passion, energy, and intelligence to take action on sustainable projects to promote peace, fight disease with a major focus on the eradication of polio, provide clean water, sanitation, and hygiene, save mothers and children, support education, literacy, and grow local economies. Many of the things that they do around the world, we can easily take for granted here in North Canada. North Canton's Rotary Service Projects include Rotary Youth Exchange, Hoover High School Scholarship Awards, Safe Kids Stark County, Boy Scouts of America, Pegasus Family Military Center, Junior Achievement, Compassion Delivered, North Canton Character Counts, North Canton YMCA, and Handicap Programs, among many, many other initiatives. Partnering with the City of North Canton, the North Canton Rotary provides funds for improvements of communities' parks, recreation spaces, which include the walking track at Christ Park, Rotary Park, and the future Performing Arts Pavilion at Fitzroy Park. Whereas whose annual Chile Golf Open Classic, Fly the Flag program, and various other fundraisers have raised money to support the betterment of youth groups, schools, and city and nonprofits. The North Canton Rotary will celebrate its 90th anniversary. Its first charter was on April 1st, 1929, and the first meeting of Rotary was March 21st, 1929. Now therefore I, David J. Held, the mayor of the city of North Canton, do hereby proclaim Monday, September 23rd, 2019, to be a day of recognition for the North Canton Rotary and the city of North Canton. And, uh, I want to thank all of you. And Paul, if you wouldn't mind, if, uh, if you wouldn't mind telling us the number of years that you've all served in the road. <coughs> yeah, I have served approximately 35 years in Rotary, not just here in North Kent, but in various other communities. Um, I have 10 years in Rotary now. Excellent. I'm in the 35 category with Paul. 20. 35 also. Years. Many years. That's incredible. So we, we have a lot of years of service. And their commitment, you know, they're a group of 40 people. It's, a, it's you know, by some organizations, it's considered a small group, or, but a very mighty group. Because again, they're going to be donating $50,000 to the Bitzer Park uh, Performing Arts Pavilion, and we're very, very excited. So thank
and I'm just honored to represent them this year. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
E, remind me of a few months ago, conversations of hostilities between council chambers. Apparently, a senior citizen calling out council attendance discrepancies is hostile, but name calling and in interruption by a council member is not. Unfortunately, <coughs> the leadership within these council chambers continues to run at a level lower than low. Condoning actions of the last council meeting by this city council reflects that very image. Let me read a quote by Jeb Bush as possible. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Your time is up. I've got one more, two more seconds. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Your time is up. Please take your seat. Does anyone else wish to address council? Please step forward, state your name and address for the record. Mr. Osborne. 20 Osborne, 07 Fairview Street, Southeast North Tampa, Ohio. I was expecting to see your ordinance, uh, what is that? 57-2019 on for tonight. I don't know what happened there. That's the one that you want to remove permit requirements for concrete work on private property. At the August 19th meeting, uh, Mr. Soretta, I'm grasping why he's desperate to get this one little item passed. At any rate, when he started his remarks back on the 19th, he immediately starts expressing his uh, concern that the planning commission did not vote in the manner he had wanted or hoped. I hope everybody up here realizes the planning commission is, is an entity in its own. It's a, I guess, a quasi-judicial body. Mr. Fox, would that be a correct description? <coughs> How would our law director feel if he started getting calls from Judge Forcione, or Judge Farmer, or Judge Ware, advising him that members of the North Kansas Planning Commission were calling him in regards to a case that he had just ruled on, and asking him, did you really understand your, what was before you? I dare say Mr. Fox would probably have a hard time. They are an independent body. You sent this to the Planning Commission for their ruling. And you didn't get the ruling you want. So you start calling up two members. You, you specifically named them. Did you really understand this? <coughs> Mr. Peters follows up stating we need to get them on board. Mr. Peters, they already made a ruling. I mean, you're going to go back and uh, arm wrestle them? You're going to send the mayor to uh, wrestle them in the submission and agree with you? And I do know if the, the fifth member had been to that planning commission, the vote would have been three to two against. <coughs> I don't know why that issue was so damn important and why you thought it was going to make a substantial change and making the city uh, more. Fantastic for working. As I told you two weeks ago, you weren't here, Mr. Soretta. It's the fact that you nearly doubled all their fees back in 2011 that has put us on this path. <clears throat> now, most of everybody up here pretty much were in agreement that as long as they followed the code, they were happy. How are you going to get them to follow the code? And know that they're following the code if you don't even know this work is taking place at whatever residence there is in town. There is nothing wrong with requiring a permit for this kind of work. It creates a lot of hard surface. We know on hard surface you have a lot of water runoff. Where's that water going to go? Don't you want to come in and inspect it? Don't you want to be assured? that they're not expanding the footprint if this is a remove and replace? Again, 
I tell you, that is the wrong path. I have a newspaper, whatever the editor, I'm going to hand out to you. <coughs> Apparently, uh, the uh, Star County Building Industry Association has been trying to assist this city. It says here for the fourth time in the past few years. This was in the paper of October of last year. And this city has continued to spurn their uh, overtures to uh, provide some assistance. Uh, I think this effort to rush this through has been done with misinformation and outright falsehoods. This continued weekend and after hours concrete work. Uh, you need to respect the sanctity of the planning commission or the zoning board. You don't go and arm wrestle them after the fact. There's no reason to try to get them on board, Mr. Peters. They've already ruled. Thank you, Mr. Osborne. Okay, anyone else wish to address council, please step forward, state your name and address for the record. Thank you. Bill Neff, 519, back to street, southeast. Okay. I just have two things to say, but first of all, when I say that, I'd like to say congratulations to the Rotary for 90 years here in the city, and also for the city for being recognized by the USA today. That's a great honor. Um, two things. One, I've been right in the heart of the city. And we got all kind of critters running around. And uh, groundhogs to whatever. I mean, I got the only thing I haven't seen yet is Bigfoot and Blackbeard. <laughs> but I've seen everything else running around here in the city. And the biggest thing we got is deers that run around. I got deers. I got herds of them back behind my place. So I got to catch cases right behind me. There's big, big bed up there in the woods. And they come down and eat flowers and everything. They eat my wife's flowers, but they don't eat my stuff. Because uh, I, I grow that stuff, John, uh, that smokes real good, you know. That, but no, I'm only kidding. <laughs> they don't eat my marijuana. I'm only kidding. I don't, I don't raise that stuff. But they, they, they are a big nuisance here in the city. And um, I did ask for signs to put up around our area down in the southeast end of town, especially where I'm at. You know, we have deers right across the street there about deer crossings, and, and nothing has happened yet. Um, I'm just waiting for a car to hit a deer or a baby deer or whatever. We got them. And they're, they're all over the place. And like I said, they eat our flowers uh, constantly. I could go to Lowe's every year and buy the deer and grab it and it spray it around. And, Whatever else I can do to get rid of these things. But anyways, um, that was the one gen I had. The second one was, I'm a cyclist. I go riding 10 miles a day, try to every day to go riding around the city. And I met a neighbor of mine who lives over in Gaslight Circle. New person that lives there. And he was telling me that uh, he went to the city. He's also a convict. He went to the city because he wants to put a an apron beside this driveway. He's, like I say, he's a contractor. He wants to put his, his trailers and stuff like that. And he asked if I could put a uh, gravel in there. Sure, that's fine. He's like, yeah, that's fine. You can do all that stuff. He goes and orders the gravel. Yes, he's got a pile of gravel sitting down there right now. City inspector came back down and said, no, you can't do that. He's why are we ordered it? Sorry, you can't do that. You have to put concrete in. You can't do that. This is the first time I was house sitting one time for a friend of mine. He, and he was in his driveway to cement. The contractor, cement contractor, is a well known person in the, in the city, in the county. He told me that. I don't like to work here in the city of North Canton because they're giving me nothing but hard ass. He said, all their stuff they got is a bunch of BS. And the things we got to go through, we get what we want to get done. Then they come out and they change the rules, they change the regulations, they change whatever. 
in the middle, the middle of the street, and they, and they don't like it. So I know, you, I know, we, I know you guys been talking about changes in that. I think it'd be a great idea to do something like that. When I was a city fire safety inspector, whenever I did inspections on on buildings, um, we had rules and regulations and, and codes we had to go by. We didn't bend the codes, but one thing we used to do is, if you tell me, if I went to you and said, yeah, get so-and-so done, and you said, I can't do this in this amount of time, then I would always say, you tell me. And if we can, if we can change the rules, since we had authority having jurisdiction, we can change some of the rules around. As long as it wasn't, you know, involved with the life safety thing or issue, we can change some things around. It'd be nice for the city to do something like that, work with the, work with the public out there. Because I, I hear this stuff. And it's not really good for us, for the city. And there ain't much I can really say about that other than, you know, I just tell them to talk to you guys about it and see what it is. But they, they just need to come up here. They need to talk to you because of that. So I'm just putting the word out to you and let you know what's really being said outside of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to address council? We'll move on to new business. May I have a motion and a second to read by title only. First reading ordinance number 66 19. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Ten. An ordinance authorizing the mayor of the city of North King to the Board of Patrol to renew a personal services agreement for a computer server, network, workstation monitoring, maintenance and support, remote and on-site support. Malware protection, web browsing protection, patch management, dark web monitoring, and security awareness education for the city's critical, complex, municipal infrastructure equipment. And given the critical nature of this agreement, to do so without advertising for bids as provided by Chapter uh, Charter Sections 4.05, contracting to purchasing and declaring the same to the university. All right, thank you. Patrick, um, we're going to have the first reading. <clears throat> Tonight, and, uh, we will um, pull council and we'll have the, the special committee for a special council meeting on the seven for the final reading. This will be outstanding. So, so if, I just have a quick question. Do we want to cover it now or until the meeting in the hall? We just cover it on the seven. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. Okay. Um, there's nothing further. I'll entertain a motion and a second to adopt the first reading. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. <laughs> Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And I have a motion and a second to read by title only. First reading ordinance number 67 15. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. In order to amend chapter 9 through 5, water lines and hydrants, codified ordinances. City of North Camp, specifically section 935.02, connection charge other than by assessment. Thank you. Uh, Chairman Scott. Yes, this is uh, uh, updating our meter connection fee, uh, new construction only, uh, from what I know, and uh, really just keep in mind that today's market pricing. So, any other comments? <coughs> not, then I'd like to make a motion to go to approve first reading. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, reports. Uh, Deputy Director of Administration. I know the problem. Director of Administration. I have a couple items to bring to Council's attention. I've uh, received uh, some correspondence from uh, the Kimball Company regarding uh, the curbside recycling program. Required to give us an annual report of the uh, tonnage collected. Uh, in the September 1st, 2018 to August 31st, 2019 period, Kimball collected 1,173 tons uh, of recyclable material, and this was consistent with the previous year's total of 1,198 tons. Under this refuse to recycle contract, the city is to be rebated. 65% of the net value of a ton of recyclables. Um, in this case, uh, what we've been 
say it all along, the cycle of the market is uh, upside down, as uh, we trending that way. Uh, the result is, uh, in essence, a negative rebate uh, for that period. So the prices are falling very rapidly as we talked about uh, when we do the contract uh, in your site. So I'm going to just bring it to your attention. Also, uh, to inform you that uh, uh, Halloween has been set for Sunday, October 27th. 2019 from 3 to 5 p.m. Uh, pursuant to uh, a resolution passed by the Stark County Board of Commissioners uh, asking all political subdivisions within Stark County to uniformly observe Halloween during your trick or treat uh, between 3 and 5 p.m. Uh, Plain Township, Lake Township have also uh, done so as well. Uh, next week, I'm sorry, next month uh, is the uh, annual meeting of the Ohio Municipal League, Wednesday, October 23rd and Thursday, October 24th. Uh, if anybody is interested in attending, uh, Deputy Director myself and myself will be attending. But it was a very good session uh, last year. I can send you over the uh, itinerary so you can look at it. If you'd like to travel down, the us go down back the same day. Uh, the company will be welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Uh, just a few announcements. The first one is uh, a lot of our residents, and actually all the residents throughout Stark County, if you have any household hazardous waste, uh, the City of Canton, in cooperation with uh, the Recycling District and also the Sheriff's Department, uh, they're going to have an annual uh, it's actually a weekly place to collect all your household hazardous waste at no cost. So it's every Tuesday from 12 to 6, and it's every Friday from 9 to 3. So there's two days a week. It's going to go on throughout the, you know, the whole year, which is a good thing. So pesticides and insecticides. They just won't take the big two TVs or the big tube monitors because that's mainly lit glass. And it's, uh, it's not, we don't have a means to recycle that. Uh, but all of your other household has just which you can bring it down at no cost. And it's at uh, Schroeder Avenue down by downtown Liberty Ford. So it's a uh, camp recycle center on Schroeder Avenue. Uh, just a block away from downtown Ford. It's now called Liberty Ford. And uh, so you can you know, head on down there every Tuesday and Friday. And bring your household hazardous waste. Uh, also, the um, you know we've had a really great response from the residents on the USA Today article. Uh, you know, being ranked the best one of the best places to live in America. And you know what's so nice about it? It's really because it's a reflection of everybody who, who lives in the community. And and all of our um, community groups. I mean, the people who live here were just excited as all of us were to hear about this. Because everybody loves to be a part of something that's considered the best. And I think what's most important about this, and we talk, we talk about this all the time, is that, you know, there's so much work to be done. There's so many different things that we have to do to improve. But I think this does confirm that we're moving in the right direction. And, and the services that we're providing, there's a standard that we have in the city. And it's a standard of excellence that our residents have come to expect, that the employees are committed to providing, and that all of you are committed to providing. Because as soon as we start to slip in that standard, you will hear about it. And that's what's good. And so, uh, I'm just, I'm really, I'm really happy for everybody who lives here in the community because we've had, uh, you know, had a number of people who just, they live in other parts of the state and they're just glad to say that they came from North County. And interestingly enough, my son Luke, my oldest one is 24, he's going to be getting married October 5th, coming up. And wouldn't you know, there's like three best cities in the United States, and the other one, uh, his bride-to-be, came from uh, New Albany, down in Columbus. So it was, it was kind of a cool thing. But uh, again, very thankful to all of you, all of our residents, and, and, uh, and <coughs> all of our council members. Thank you, Mayor. Director Paul. 
thank you to the uh, Rotary for their uh, very generous donation to uh, Bits Park. There was a, a mention as, as well this evening of the city officials with um, nuisance and housing issues with working with, with residents. And uh, I, I think that each one is a case-by-case -case basis. And sometimes uh, perhaps there's a, a misunderstanding of the requirement and the necessity. But I can assure you that when those cases are, are brought from the, the housing office or the nuisance office are brought to the law department, that's one of the first things that we discuss. Each instance is a unique set of circumstances and that uh, that is exactly what we do. We talk about how we can bring this about. We're not there to try to punish or harm someone because they can't comply. We're trying to bring the issue into compliance. So uh, you know, perhaps with maybe a, a new uh, officer working and, and looking at some rules and, and some of the guidelines, perhaps there's a bit of a misunderstanding with, with that. But you're right, that's what we do. We, we try to look at when can we get this done? What is a reasonable period of time to resolve this um, this issue? So thank you for uh, bringing that up. Okay, thank you. Director Finance. Uh, just one quick reminder, we did post a open position last week in the finance department for a new board, a utility billing board. The title of the job is client coordinator, utility billing, and some who's going to retire at the end of this year. And we're excited for her, but we're sad for us because she's a big part of our team, so we're looking for a replacement. If you go to NorthgateOhio.gov slash jobs, you can plot in the old details. So if you guys know anybody, please send them my line. Thank you. Can you talk louder? Okay. Can't hear. Can you hear Thank you. Uh, just a couple quick things. I uh, wanted to report that we've got two projects currently out for bid that we talked about here. Uh, we'll open both on Friday, October 4th. Uh, the first one is the rebid of our Apple Grove repaving project. That's a joint one with the Stark County Engineer's Office. As you know, we only had a couple, one bid last summer, quite high. Uh, in just two days since the advertisement and last Thursday, we already have four sets out. I think someone's coming to get a fifth set tomorrow. So that's an improvement already. And uh, all the other project is our East Hill construction. We talked about a couple nice grants over a million dollars in that. And both projects we also put a June 30th completion date. We're not trying to jam them in before winter. Uh, contractors, maybe not Apple grows so much, but we still work throughout the winter at Weather House. So hopefully we'll see some good pricing there. But we're only being out on the streets for a few days, generate a lot of interest for it. So it usually helps us with that bottom line cost, but we'll see. And, and lastly, I just wanted to mention kind of on the other end of the scale is we completed our weather reconstruction project last week. We started that one printed on the 4th of July, actual construction, and wrapped it up in a few months, and we're pretty happy with how that took that. Just my report. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Member Revolt. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, I think we heard tonight uh, two very different views of Ordinance 57-2019 from our constituents. We heard one individual, Mr. Osborne, who's proposed, and we also heard from uh, Bill that uh, he would like to have liked to see us become more contractor friendly. And I think that's what the effort was behind that piece of legislation. The fact of the matter is we did meet with contractors, we ran this through the administration, we ran to permits and inspection. And uh, as I indicated earlier, I consider this an experiment to see if we can, in fact, become more, more business friendly for the contractors. Uh, I, would, I would like Chuck to take exception to, uh, to one of the things you said, and, and that is uh, <clears throat> the criticism, criticism directed at Mark uh, for calling the members of the planning commission. I think the fact of the matter is that it's really intellectually honest is before we vote to make sure that we haven't missed something. Was there a reason 
uh, why that planning commission did not support that measure. Did we miss something? Uh, if you'd had a council member show up, you'd know. Yeah, or you know. Um, and I, I, and I, think that's, I think that's a that's an appropriate appropriate function for for a member of council, uh, just to conduct that that sort of uh, double double check. I think the other thing is this: is in, in, if we look at the ordinance, uh, the planning commission reviews and recommends action. We have we have the authority, the only authority, to either reject that recommendation or take action on our own. Uh, the planning commission did, in fact, fulfill its its purpose, and we chose uh, to proceed in another fashion. So, I again, I think Mark uh, Mark did. Uh, did the job he was supposed to do. Uh, the second thing, Bill, is, is this, and you mentioned the deer. Uh, I think it's, it's an issue here in town, wild animals are, but I think we have to be really uh, honest about this, that uh, as long as we have habitat and we have a food source, we're likely going to have deer. Uh, it is very difficult to get the Ohio Department of Natural Resources to authorize a deer kill. And uh, in a community where our housing is so concentrated, it will be not done by Mark Street. Uh, the only option is what's called trap and bolt. I'll leave it to your imagination. But I don't think it's something either you or your neighbors want in your front lawn. Uh, so we're kind of in a, in a tough spot there. Uh, all we can do is, is hopefully discourage the deer from eating flowers and discourage people from supplying them with corn and other, other foodstuffs and make the place less attractive. I mean, it's an issue that I've got my neighbor, I've got a neighbor who feeds with your corn. And then as things get tougher in the winter, they have managed to consume most of my ground cover. So I, I feel it, but again, the options are pretty limited. And again, you've got to get OBR to authorize uh, authorized action as a license. So uh, we've been down this path, I think, with Dominic and a couple of his constituents uh, before. We just don't have good choices. <coughs> so, yeah, we, we don't advise feeding wild animals. Yeah, we should move to that. But that's something for another conversation. So, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Number five, Chair. Uh, I just want to say I get what Chuck's saying, of course, Bill. Uh, I think more like Bill, that I'm not looking for it to be more facts and days ago. I'm just looking for it to be more user friendly with people that have good reputation to move to the city. And then I want to say, Rotary, that's very generous of that. 50000 is a huge amount of money. And to put it into something that's going to make what the downtown part's going to feel like as we move forward with the downtown redevelopment district. It's huge, so I'm looking forward to it, and I'm sure a lot of people are. Also, today's the first day of fall, so I'm going to say to all the people, take some time, smell the roses, look at the pretty flowers, live life, man, because I'm telling you, it's snuffed out really quickly. So you want to enjoy your life, take the grandkids, go to the pumpkin patch, carve a pumpkin, live your life, man, have some fun. That's all. Thank you, Member Font. Well said. Okay, Member Keith. No report. I'm going to say thank you to the Rotary. That was a pretty awesome contribution. So thank you to all the former members and future members. It was awesome. Thanks, Rob. Uh, just a few things. And, and Daryl, thanks for the backup there. I was going to mention that basically the same thing. And uh, you were involved in this. And that's uh, exactly how, how why you understand it so well. And Bill, thank you for your comments. And I understand Chuck's. Um, that was, we've heard the same comments that you have mentioned, Bill, so many times. This is why we did this. Because people were not happy with want to make improvements. It's too hard. It's a big issue. And we've been hearing from contractors and contractors. And so we did what we're supposed to do. We meet with those people. We talk to those people. We try to figure out a plan. And like Daryl has said, you know, we're not scared to try something. We can change it. And we're trying to make it better. That's the whole idea. There's no... Double secret probation Chuck, secret thing that we're doing here with this. We're running this thing through because there's a need for it. Uh, we're going to rewrite some codes and we're moving in the right direction to make things better for everybody. 
That's what we want to be. We've always said that. And so we've got to do something to be better. We don't just sit around and pretend that. So this is exactly what we're trying to do with that there. So I um, appreciate everybody being concerned. And sometimes I know we don't explain it. But some of this stuff is uh, is tough to explain about how the contractors work and how some of the issues that they have of that. And hopefully when we have our public speaks, some of those guys will be up there. Um, and I did want to mention the Rotary. I've been here all my life, and I've known so many Rotary people, and they've always been so great. I mean, and they're always some of the top people in our community in the Rotary. They've always been there supporting us throughout the community, no matter who you were. So kudos to all the Rotary folks there. And that's all I have. Thank you, Mark. Okay, just to touch on our upcoming uh, council uh, meeting agenda, uh, next Monday, September 30th, there'll be no meeting. October. October 7th, um, we will have committee to hold and then a public hearing at 6.45 prior to the meeting. Uh, this will, uh, the content of this is the concrete. Uh, that's what we've been talking about. October 14th, regular council meeting. October 27th will be the committee to hold. And then the last Monday, the 28th, will be the special committee meeting budget only. Mr. President, did you want to schedule a special meeting for the 7th? I do. Uh, to pass Ordinance 6619, I need a motion and a second to schedule a special council meeting October 7th. So moved. Second. Yes. Let's do it after the, we get the public hearing prior. Let's do it after the committee. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. I'm going to call business. See you Second. Second. All in favor? Aye.